This audio production was made in collaboration with Audible Anarchist. Part 4 Mikhail Bakunin said that, quote, No individual can recognize his own humanity and consequently realize it in his lifetime, if not by recognizing it in others and cooperating in its realization for others. No man can achieve his own emancipation without the same time without at the same time working for the emancipation of all men around him. My freedom is the freedom of all, since I am not truly free in thought and in fact, except when my freedom and rights are confirmed and approved in the freedom and rights of all men who are my equals. It matters to me very much what other men are, because however independent I may appear to be or think I am, because of my social position, where I pope, czar, emperor, or even prime minister, I remain always the product of what the humblest among them are. If they are ignorant, poor, slaves, my existence is determined by their slavery. I, an enlightened or intelligent man, am, for instance, in the event, rendered stupid by their stupidity. As a courageous man, I am enslaved by their slavery. As a rich man, I tremble before their poverty. As a privileged person, I blanch at their justice. I, who want to be free, cannot be because all the men around me do not yet want to be free. And consequently, they become tools of oppression against me. End quote. Solidarity is therefore the state of being in which man attains the greatest degree of security and well-being. Therefore, egoism itself, that is, the exclusive consideration of one's own interest, impels man and human society towards solidarity. Or it would be better to say that egoism and altruism, concern for the interest of others, becomes infused into a single sentiment, just as the interests of the individual and those of society coincide yet man cannot in one leap pass from the animal state to the human state from the brutish struggle between man and man to the joint struggle of all men united in comradeship against the outside forces of nature guided by the advantages which association and the consequent division of labor offer man developed towards solidarity but his development met with an obstacle which led him away from his goal and continues to do so to this day. Man discovered that he could at least up to a certain point and for material and basic needs, which only then did he feel, achieve the advantages of cooperation by subjecting other men to his will instead of joining with them. And in view of the fact that the fierce and antisocial instincts inherited from his animal ancestry were still strong in him, he obliged the weakest to work for him, preferring domination to association. Perhaps, too, in most cases, it was in exploiting the vanquished that man learned for the first time to understand the advantages of association. Uh, the good that man could derive from the support of his fellows. Thus, the realization of the usefulness of cooperation, which should have led to the triumph of solidarity in all human relations, instead gave rise to private property and government, that is, to the exploitation of the labor of the whole community by by a privileged minority. It was still association and cooperation outside there is no possible human life, but it is a way of cooperation imposed and controlled by a few for their own personal interest. From this fact has arisen that the great contradiction which fills the pages of human history between the tendency to association and comradeship for the conquest and adaptation of the external world to man's needs and for the satisfaction of sentiments of affection and the tendency to divide into many units separate and hostile as are the groupings determined by geographic and ethnographic conditions as are the economic altitudes Uh, as there are those men who have succeeded in winning an advantage and want to make sure of it and add to it, as there are those who hope to win a privilege, as there are those who suffer by an injustice or privilege and rebel and seek to make amends. The principle of each for himself, which is the war of all against all, arose in the course of history to complicate, to sidetrack, to paralyze the war of all against nature, 
for the greatest well-being of mankind, which can be completely successful only by being based on the principle of all for one and one for all. Mankind has suffered great harm as a result of this intrusion of domination and exploitation in the midst of human association. But in spite of the terrible oppression to which the masses have been subjected, in spite of poverty, in spite of vice, crime, and the degradation which prop poverty and slavery produce in the slaves and in their masters in spite of accumulated antagonism of wars of extermination in spite of artificially created conflicting interests the social instinct has survived and developed cooperation having remained an essential condition for man to wage a successful war against external nature it also remained the permanent cause for bringing men closer together and for developing among them sentiments of sympathy the very oppression of the masses created a feeling of comradeship among the oppressed and it is only because of the more or less conscious and widespread solidarity that existed among the oppressed that they were able to endure the oppression that mankind survived the causes of death uh, that crept into their midst. Today, the immense development of production, the growth of those requirements which can only be satisfied by the participation of large numbers of people in all countries, the means of communication with travel being a commonplace, science, literature, businesses, and even wars, all have drawn mankind into ever tighter single body whose constituent parts united among themselves can only find fulfillment and freedom to develop through the well-being of the other constituent parts as well as the whole. The inhabitants of Naples is as concerned in the improvement of the living conditions of the people inhabiting the banks of the Ganges from whence cholera comes to him as he is in the drainage of the fond Fondasi of his own city the well-being the freedom and the future of a highlander lost among the gorges of the apennines are dependent not only on the conditions of prosperity or of poverty of the inhabitants of his village on the general condition of the italian people but also on workers conditions in america or australia on the discovery made by a Swedish scientist on the state of mind and material conditions of the Chinese on there being war or peace in Africa. In other words, all the circumstances, large and small, which anywhere in the world are acting on a human being. In present day conditions in society, this vast solidarity which joins together all men is for the most unconscious since it emerges spontaneously out of the friction between individual interests, whereas men are hardly, if at all, concerned with the general interests. And this is the clearest proof of the solidarity is a natural law of mankind, which manifests itself and commands respect in spite of all the obstacles and dissensions created by society as a present or at present uh, constituted on the other hand the oppressed masses who have never completely resigned themselves to oppression and poverty and who today are more than ever show themselves thirsting for justice freedom well-being are beginning to understand that they will not be able to achieve their emancipation except by union and solidarity with all the oppressed which the which or with the exploited everywhere in the world and they also understand that the indispensable condition for the emancipation which cannot be neglected is the possession of the means of production of the land of the instruments of labor and therefore the abolition of private property and science the observation of social manifestations indicates that this abolition of private property would be of great value even to the privileged minority if they only if only they were to want to give up their domineering attitude and work with everybody else for the common good. So therefore, if the oppressed masses were to refuse the, to work for others and were to take over the land and the instruments of work, soon from the land over landowners or were to want to use them on their own account for their own benefit, that is the benefit of all, if they were to decide never again to put up with domination and brute force, nor with economic privilege, and if the sentiment of human solidarity, strengthened by a community of interests, were to have put an end to wars and colonialism, what justification would there be for the continued existence of government? Existence of government. 
Uh, once private property has been abolished, government, which is its defender, must disappear. If it were to survive, it would tend to always reestablish a privileged and oppressing class in one guise or another. And the abolition of government does not and cannot mean the breakdown of a social link. Quite the contrary, cooperation which today is imposed and directed to the benefit of a few would be free, voluntary, and directed to everybody's interests, and therefore it would become that much more widespread and effective. Social instinct, the sentiment of solidarity, would be developed to the highest degree, and every man would strive to do his best for everybody else, both, both to satisfy his intimate feelings as well as for his clearly understood interest from the free participation of all by means of the spontaneous grouping of men according to their requirements and their sympathies from the bottom to the top from the single to the complex starting with the most urgent interests and arriving in the end at the most remote and most general a social organization would emerge uh, the functioning of which would be the greatest well-being and the greatest freedom for everybody and would draw together the whole of mankind into community of comradeship and would be modified and improved according to changing circumstances and the lessons learned from experience. This society of free people, the society of friends, is called anarchy. This has been a production of Audible Anarchist. You can find more Audible Anarchist on YouTube.